And uh, I want to share this morning on uh, the spirit of infirmity. Spirit of infirmity. The Bible tells us in Acts 10, describes Jesus' ministry. And many of us, we have different concepts of what Jesus is like. So we need revelation of him. And if the revelation you have of him is he's your shepherd and he cares for you and protects you, well, you can live and move out of that revelation and experience him. Uh, but there are many facets. Jesus is like a diamond and many different facets to him. And one facet to him is that he is a mighty warrior. The Bible says in Luke, he was born king. So he didn't come as someone insignificant. Maybe the place he was born was insignificant, but he himself, he came into this world as a king to conquer. He came with a mission. In 1 John 3 verse 8, the last part it says, for this purpose was the Son of God manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. So Jesus came with a warrior mentality. The compassion of God moves God to fight on our behalf. If you see someone who is overwhelmed and vulnerable and unable to help themselves, something in you rises up and overcomes the fear of evil to engage whatever that is to bring release to that personal child. So parents will put themselves in the way of danger to release their children. Our God is a compassionate God, but He is also a warrior. There's an aspect runs right through the Bible where it tells us that God is a warrior. Exodus 15 verse 3, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Psalm 24, lift up your head, O your gates, and be lifted up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. He said, who is this King of glory? The Lord, the Lord of armies is his name. The Lord mighty in battle. So when we follow through Scripture, we find the theme of battles, of warfare, of conflict, and of God's people having to arise and possess the things that God promised to them. And I have found that today's culture, uh, the church on the whole has become very passive, become very subdued, and it needs to regain again that sense where we are commissioned and we are strengthened by the Holy Ghost. Paul said, I pray that your eyes will be opened so you know the hope of this calling you have. He said, I pray, he said, I pray that you will be strengthened with dunamis in your inner man. Now, that's not a weak church. That's a church with people who the power of God is flowing in their life. And we need that because we face a mission. And behind or invisible forces interact to hinder and obstruct what is going on in people's lives. And so we see as we look in Jesus' ministry, many times he encountered people who were tormented with evil spirits. There's a tendency for the church to avoid this topic in this area. It doesn't mean that it goes away. It just means you're rendered impotent and it works unhindered. God wants his church to understand Jesus came to expose and destroy the works of the devil and then to empower us so that we would carry authority as a believer. And even as a young believer, when I was only, uh, I guess, baptized in the spirit about, how many years, about six months or eight months or something like that, God showed me how to bring his presence into a classroom I taught in. He showed me how the presence of God coming in and can be released into the places you work. And I started to then have people manifest because what was in the room and atmosphere where I taught affected what was in their lives. At a very early young age as a Christian, I got exposed to the reality of the spiritual world and this conflict that we have. I don't go looking for demons, but I seem to find I bump into them everywhere I go. My focus is on Jesus. And I want to share with you a story here about a woman gloriously set free. The Bible tells us Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. Everywhere he went, he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. The word oppressed 
is a word made up of two words, kata meaning down, uh, dunesco meaning to exercise a spiritual force so you hold someone down, and it says evil spirits hold people down. Many of the problems that people face are not just sin in their life, but the presence of spirit beings intent on destroying and hindering their effectiveness for Christ, crippling them and limiting them, holding people down. People can be held down in their body with illness and sickness and infirmities. People can be held down in their soul with emotional problems and turmoil and depression. People can be held down in their thoughts with fears, with mindsets, with limiting beliefs. That's the work of the devil. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. And so the Bible records stories where Jesus encountered individuals and crowds, 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 many who needed to be set free. And the Bible describes in the New Testament, they carried on the ministry of Jesus. He said, the works I do, you will do also. He has authorized the church to represent him. And wherever people are held in bondage to demonic spirits, you are authorized to deal with them. There's no such ministry in the Bible as some specialist deliverance ministry. It is the ministry of all believers to exercise your privileged right and honor as a child of the winning army over the devil and all his works. He's got to learn how to do it. So we want to just go through the story. I want to open up a story, and perhaps some of you are like the woman in the story and need to be set free today. That's possibly the person next to you, because I know you're so good, this wouldn't even apply. <laughs> so let's read through the story in Luke chapter 13 and verse 10. And now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. So you notice the scene where the story takes place. It's not out in the public. It's in a church gathering. It's on a Sabbath day where believers are gathered. Only believers are in this meeting. And literally later, Jesus calls her a daughter of Abraham. So this is a believer. Jesus said deliverance is the children's bread. As a child of God, God has made provision for you. Bread always speaks of provision. Deliverance is a provision that God has made, firstly for you to be free, and then for you to be able to minister to others, it strengthens your inner man. And so Jesus came into a church and said, Behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years, and she was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. So in the middle of the meeting, and probably hiding in the back because of an incredibly embarrassing condition, is a woman and she is bent over. She's literally bent double, right over like that. That is really, really restricted. No way you can watch TV like that, is there, really? I mean, that's really restricted. You imagine living your life like that. That is horrendous. Distorted, twisted, bent out of shape, humiliated. Humiliated. And the source of the problem is not some physical pain or or some physical condition in her back, it actually originates from a demonic spirit that has entered her life 18 years ago. And Jesus said, the devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy. And when the spirit entered her, it's a particular spirit called a spirit of infirmity. And it attacked her back and it forced her to bend over until eventually she became doubled up and her life became incredibly uncomfortable very, very limited, very, very restricted, and with it a deep sense of shame at this humiliating condition. It says it's a woman had that, and woman sometimes is a picture symbolically in the Bible of the church. So not only is this speaking of an individual person, it speaks also of the church of Jesus' day, which was bent down, humiliated by demonic spirits, held down in bondage to legalism, religious laws, no freedom, no joy, held down in restriction, not enjoying the abundance of covenant blessing. And so this woman has a spirit of infirmity. The word infirmity means 
without strength. It's a particular spirit that attaches to people and it causes many different kinds of problems. It can cause physical problems, physical sicknesses, illnesses in the body, back, spine, joints, various other parts of the body. It can also affect the mind, affect the learning. It can also drain people of energy so they live unable to get up, literally can't engage properly in life. I notice it affects people who've gone through traumas and often hinders the process of healing so that the person remains in the state of trauma and can't seem to get out of it. I have seen many people like that. I remember praying for a woman in Australia and she came up, she's 35. And she said, I went through a trauma when I was 12 years old. My father was a very wealthy man and some men broke into our house and they tied me up on my bed and they held a chopper to me and they beat my father trying to get him to tell him where the money was. And he wouldn't tell where the money was. And so they threatened to chop her up. So she became terrorized by that. And that experience which happened all those years ago was as alive in her all 23 years later as it was that that happened. And it had affected all her relationships, it affected in many different ways for a variety of reasons. I prayed for her and we broke the soul tie to the trauma and commanded the spirit of infirmity and terror to come out of her and she shook violently from head to foot and then suddenly she was free. Set free, she had not done anything wrong. Something had happened to her and been done to her and the devil used that as a doorway into her life to keep her in a place of bondage. Now, physically, she looked very beautiful, but in her soul, she was like this lady, bent right down and powerless. Powerless to get over the impact of what evil men had done. That's a spirit, spirit of infirmity. She needed to be set free. I remember praying for another young man, and uh, he came up on a word of knowledge. He was in a Bible school, and the word of knowledge was this. Uh, it was that he had a, a pain in his shoulder, right shoulder, and uh, it was severe, wouldn't go away, he'd sought treatment and it wouldn't go. And so this young man came up and as he came up, the Lord spoke to me and said, it's a spirit of infirmity. He has bitterness in his heart towards his father. So the young man came up and asked him about the condition. And uh, then I said to him, tell me about your relationship with your father. He said, oh, I love my father. And uh, quite often you find when you're dealing with spiritual problems that the initial response conceals what's really going on. And often to cope with pain, people just deny it. And so I s asked the Lord, what's, what's happening? And then I said, isn't it true your father, uh, is a, he works in business, travels a lot? He said, yes. Isn't it true he's away a lot of the time and in fact he's been away so much that he's missed all of your key school events and you've actually been very resentful about that's become angry and bitter inside about that he said that's true i have i said you need to forgive your father i said while it appears to you he's neglecting you and you're angry at that he's probably trying to serve and help his family you just need to forgive and release it because jesus made it very clear that if we won't from our heart forgive our brother then we will be delivered to tormentors, Matthew 18, 34 and 35. And I said, you, you need to be willing to let go this grief and this uh, anger and this unforgiveness you're holding in your heart because this is the root of the problem you've got in your body. The physical pain is caused by a spirit which is coming because of the unforgiveness and bitterness. So I said, the, the physical pain is symptomatic of deep spiritual issues that need to be brought to resolution. And the way to resolve it is to repent and forgive your father. So I led him in a prayer. He repented, forgave his father, and uh, asked the Lord to forgive him. I took authority over the spirit of infirmity, commanded out. Immediately, his shoulder was freed up. And then he said, Pastor, he said, look, I didn't tell you, but actually I've got pains all over my body. And the doctor told me my body was freezing up my spine was freezing and they could do nothing about it. By the age of 40, I would not be able to bend. And then he bent right over. He said, I am completely free. Spirit of infirmity. 
Now, you understand, he's gone to the doctor and the doctor can't help because the issue requires spiritual power. And Christ has authorized the church to be able to resolve these things. So here's the woman who had a spirit of infirmity. Now it said she had the spirit of infirmity 18 years. So there was a definite point at which the spirit entered her life. Spirits can't just enter your life at any time. They have limitations to where they can operate. And they look for various opportunities and avenues to get into people's lives. That's why it tells us in Ephesians 4.27, give no place, give no jurisdiction, give no opportunity for a spirit to access your life. Because if you give it an opportunity, it will access, and then you will wrestle with problems that you can't get the victory over. Reading your Bible and praying won't be enough to deal with it. You have to confront the issue itself. And so this woman had the spirit of infirmity 18 years. 18 years ago, uh, something happened in her life and a doorway was opened. Uh, I remember I was in the, Pacific, in the Pacific Islands in Fiji and uh, I had the opportunity to preach in one of the most outermost islands. And we went out there in a little boat. It was went out at night and a bit scary really because they're driving fast through coral reefs and I can't see where we're going. I just have to trust the driver. Then we kind of get out and wade ashore and there's lanterns. And I'm thinking, well, this is pretty primitive. This is quite fun. And uh, we go to a little village uh, uh, hall, and, uh, and there's people there. I can't even hardly see them. It's so dark in the place, barely have enough light to see my Bible. And so anyway, I preached a message. It was this message here. At the end of it, a woman dragged herself to the front. And she came up to the front, and she crawled away to the front, and I could see her crutches on the ground behind her. And it was obviously she had something wrong in her back and legs. I said, how long have you been like that? She said, 12 years. So I said, prior to that, you didn't need these walking sticks. No, I did not. I said, did someone near to you die 12 years ago? Did your husband die? She said he did. Was he involved in the occult? Was he involved in spiritism? She said, yes, he was. Now, I had felt that the whole village was under the influence of witchcraft, in spite of it being a Christian village because of the nature of the accidents and things that were happening. And now it was suddenly outed. It was out there, shouted out for everyone to know that this man had been practicing witchcraft. When he died, the spirits he was working with transferred to his wife because two become one. We prayed for her, commanded the spirit to come out of her. She stood up and walked home without the crutches. These things are very real. Oh, it's very quiet. There must be someone next to you who needs to hear this. <laughs> so the spirit of infirmity ended 18 years ago and she was bent over and could no way raise herself up she had no power it was not there was not strength in her to deal with the issue so how is it a spirit like that could enter a person's life because clearly it came in at a certain point there are a number of ways it could have come in one could have been in her family line and therefore come right down through the family but in this case it was 18 years ago so it seems like something happened in her life so there are some possibilities. Here's some possibilities. If she had been involved in idolatry of any kind, that would have opened the door to a familiar spirit, a, a, a spirit like that, a spirit of infirmity to come. If she'd been involved in fortune telling, gone to any form of fortune telling, any kind of uh, reaching out for the supernatural information, if she'd been involved in any form of magic, then that could have opened the doorway in. It, quite possibly she had developed a deep bitterness against some male or some person and that would have opened the doorway for that spirit to come in or it's quite possible that she had some traumatic experience and the spirit used it rode in on that painful experience could have been an assault sexual assault violence some kind of accident we don't know what it is but those are possible doorways for spirits to enter people's lives what we do know is the life was terribly, terribly limited. Sometimes people go through a crisis in life and it's deeply emotional and it lasts a long time. And when that happens, a spirit of infirmity can enter them. And you notice it's very difficult for them to recover. The situation has changed, but they don't seem to have come out of it. It's often a spirit has come around their life. That's why the person is still locked in back there 
with what was happening to them. The pain and the stress opened the door for a spirit to afflict them. And you can tell such a person, come on, stir yourself up, go on, get going. It doesn't work. What is needed is the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus came to expose this thing. He, he, in this particular story, he not only cast the spirit out of the lady and healed her, but he exposed at the same time the lack of love and care and healing that was in the church that called to represent him. And this woman was in desperate position and Jesus came to heal her. The Bible calls deliverance the children's bread. God's desire is for you to be set free. Sometimes it doesn't enter our mind that the pressure we've got on us could be a spirit. The church in the West has become very, very secular in its thinking or it's taken on the scientific worldview. The reality is that we live in a world which is physical and there's a spiritual world around that interacts with us. So everywhere Jesus went, he encountered people who were tormented with evil spirits. Not a psychological problem, it's a spirit being that needs to be driven out. It's like a spiritual cockroach. I don't like cockroaches much. Don't think anyone here does. They get very big though. You notice the cockroaches hang around in the dark. You go into your room and switch the light on. Whoop, there's one on the floor. And it scurries. Get it, get it, get it, get it, like that. They run away. They don't like the light. And, and demonic spirits are a little like that. They hide in the dark. They conceal themselves. So you're not aware that's what it is. But there's a pressure on you you can't seem to resolve. And many things can cause that pressure. It can be unresolved sin. It can be unresolved uh, unforgiveness in our life. It can be unresolved trauma, but it can be just the pressure of spirits making life very, very difficult, tormenting thoughts and things you can't seem to get over. So Jesus' desire was for her to be set free. I've seen so many people loosed of these kinds of things. If you read through the Bible, you'll find Jesus describes a whole number of different kinds of spirits, even affect children. Age is of no concern to the demonic realm they seek to destroy. Jesus came to model the authority a child of God has. He went into a synagogue in one place and the demon cried out, oh, leave us alone, leave us alone. That's the devil's prayer, leave us alone. Don't talk about us, don't teach about us, don't bother us, just leave us alone so we can carry on working. They recognized who he was. They knew exactly who he was and they yielded to his authority. When Jesus went to the cross, it says at the cross, Colossians 2, verse 14, it says, he forgave us all our sins. He took the list of everything that was against us and contrary to us, he took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross and disarmed principalities and powers. Then having risen from the dead, he commissioned the church and gave authority over evil spirits. If they should come into your life, into your household, into any part of the environment you are, you have authority. He said in Luke 10, 19, I give you authority to tread on those serpents and scorpions. Put them under your feet. Authority has to be understood and exercised. God wants the church to begin to do that. I learned to do that when I was a very young Christian. Very young. Just started going. I wasn't going very long at all. And, and a spirit walked into our room one night and it scared me. I was so terrified I could hardly breathe. And I realized after all that experience was over, there is a real spirit world. I, I'm on the winning side. I need to learn how to get the victory into reality. Amen. God taught me how to pray, taught me how to take dominion over those things, taught me in the classroom where I taught, taught in the physics classroom in high school taught me how to bring the presence of God into the room. I remember having experiences there where sometimes people going by would shake because they would react to the atmosphere of the presence of God. I understood we have authority. You have authority. You just have to exercise it. You remove the devil of all of his rights and then you can cast him out wherever he is. 
Jesus saw her. Wherever you are, whatever's going on in your life, you may be able to conceal it, but you can't conceal it from Jesus. He sees the struggle. He sees where fear has bowed you down. He sees where grief has bowed you down. He sees where the terror of things you've walked through have bowed you down. He sees what's got a hold of your life. He sees it. And said he called the woman to himself. Jesus Christ has won an immense victory for us. He still invites people to come to him to be set free. Many times people are looking for a deliverance minister or someone, pray for me, pray for me, do something for me, fix me. But Jesus calls you to come to him. He has won the victory. Join to him, we share that victory. All we have to do is deal with the issues that allow the Spirit in and step up and begin to claim what is rightfully ours. Freedom is yours. Jesus called you to freedom. And freedom looks like something. It looks full of joy. <laughs> it looks full of peace. It looks full of rest. Freedom looks like something. I see many people, I think, man, oh man, I, you need something to fix you up, you know. You're so heavy and depressed. They come into church, you know, you, sometimes you see them. You think, whoa, that's not free. I'm singing a song of freedom. I'm free. I'm free. No, you're not. No, you're not. Have a look in the mirror. You're not. <laughs> you need to get free. See, when Jesus desires, we walk in freedom. Freedom from sin, freedom from oppression, freedom from grief, to step up and take hold of what he's given to us and to live a life that's obviously free and joyful. Joy and laughter, one of the evidences of freedom. So you find in the New Testament where deliverance happened, the city was full of joy. People got excited and they laughed. People, some people try to make the whole deliverance thing too serious. I think it's, I think it, well, it is serious, I suppose, but it, there's a great joy in it to see people set free. Great joy to know you're free of that thing that got a hold of you. I remember one time I was praying and I was thinking, dear Lord, this is terrible. I'm trying to pray and I've got all these unclean thoughts coming into my head. This is horrendous. And I feel a bit guilty about that. And the Lord says, an unclean spirit. I said, what? You had an unclean spirit. You've just been letting it bother you for far too long. Why don't you do something about it? No, I never thought of that. And he said, well, then just do something. So I just prayed and the Spirit spoke. Unclean spirit, I bind your operation. Go. And boom, the atmosphere all cleared just like that. I thought, I wonder why I didn't do that a long time ago. <laughs> and it's like that for many people here. I wonder why you didn't stand up in your authority and command some things to go a long time ago. Why have you just lived with them and accommodated them and let them hold you down? And Jesus saw her and called her to himself, laid hands on her, commanded the spirit to go, and she was set free. I'd love to see you set free today. And maybe some of you are bowed down with this and that, whatever. God knows what it is, but you could be set free in just the next half hour. Your life could turn around and change. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Why don't we just close our eyes right now? Why don't you just to close your eyes? Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence here. We thank you for the joy you bring when we become free. We thank you for the great joy of our salvation. And Lord, I'm asking right now that you would move upon people and everywhere that people have a bondage in their life of some kind, and particularly where the spirit of infirmity has weakened them and caused them to believe they're powerless or to feel powerless or to live powerless, I'm asking, Lord, you just uncover it right now. Bring to mind the people where this thing started. Where did it first happen that I lost strength? Where did this thing first come around my life? That's the thing you need to remember and bring to the cross. Is there someone I need to forgive? I've just been sitting on the hurt, a father, a mother, or some boyfriend or girlfriend, or someone who's taken advantage of me. Is there something happened to me? I never talked about it, but I realize I've never been quite right ever since then. 
is there something that I went through over a period of time in church or in the community and it's left a mark on me and I know I'm bowed down I don't stand up properly perhaps it's shame and I just hate what I'm like and that I let that happen to me you know what's in your story but Jesus invites you to come he sees you he never condemned the woman he saw her bowed down and he was upset for her his compassion moved him to engage her and set her free Jesus has not changed he'll do the same for you Pastor German's going to come up now and just do some business matter for the church and after that we're going to have an altar call for people if you'd like to be set free of a spirit of infirmity this last session many got free altar was full of people saying I've just lived with this stuff and I want to be free of it it starts with a decision